Hi everyone, and welcome to the General Hospital Recap for June 9th. Uh, thank you so much for bearing with me. Crazy weekend, again, almost done with the crazy weeks and weekends, but let's get right to it. So at Curtis's, Jordan is reeling from the confrontation with Aunt Stella, and Curtis asks if she's gonna let this make her back out of their relationship, and she thinks that maybe Stella has a point about them. Uh, Curtis doesn't wanna go backwards, though. Let's get, oh, good. Eyes, I have eyes again. <laughs> uh, Curtis doesn't want to go backwards though. You know, he doesn't care if Stella is ever okay with this. And they worked really hard. It makes it look like I have a black eye. Let's see if there's another filter. Oh, that's so bright. Nope. Oh, gosh. No. Nope. Am I green? No. Let's just stick with it. Alright, so uh, uh, he doesn't care if Stella's ever okay with this, but Jordan says like he can't not care how he feels. At what if it becomes like between the two of them? You know, what if she makes him, choo him choose? And Curtis doesn't think it's going to come to that. Uh, he thinks if they're careful and patient and respectful that Stella will eventually be okay with it. But they agree that Stella can't find out that TJ isn't Thomas's son, especially not now. You know, there's really going to be no right time for that. At Kelly's, Stella is there and she surprises TJ. Uh, she's proud of him and then she talks a little about Curtis and then TJ kind of like you know beats around the bush and then asks if he knows about Curtis and Jordan well now she does <laughs> way to be subtle and uh, she says that you know they're all still standing and that's all he should concern himself with and you know that in his grades uh, she's missed him so much and he wondered if things changed and she stopped caring and she's like why would you think I stopped caring about my sister's only grandson <laughs> so he starts to say something about his dad and then Jordan, Jordan and Curtis come in and you know she was very happy to see TJ and then uh, Stella says that Jordan's been feeding TJ lies about her and his father um, you know where did he get the notion that she would want him to stay away from and she would want no that she would want to stay away from him. Ooh, can't think. Uh, so she wants an explanation. Uh, Jordan says, you know, she did what she, she thought was best at the time to keep everyone safe. It was the wrong decision. She apologizes. Uh, Stella says, you know, the video calls and the letters weren't enough. Like, she actually wanted to see him. And Jordan says if she had to do it over again, she wouldn't have taken the DEA job. But she can't change the past. Just take responsibility and move on. Uh, she wants to make things better for all of them moving forward. She just needs a chance. Uh, Jordan and TJ go to the side. Curtis talks to Stella. Stella is beyond upset and she intends to remain a part of TJ's life whether Jordan likes it or not. And TJ says he almost told Stella about Sean. <laughs> Don't do that. And Jordan hopes that you know, he can keep this under wraps, at least for now, for Stella's sake. And they all need time to ease her into the truth. Uh, just think about Stella's feelings and they're all still family no matter what. Also at Kelly's, or outside Kelly's, um, Spencer and Laura are approaching. Uh, she's still disciplining him for what happened the other day with Hayden and Cameron. And Laura's going to make her wash Hayden's car and write an apology letter. And Spencer's like, I don't do chores. And it's like, honey, you do now. My hair is an absolute mess. Uh, so Scott then approaches them and Laura tells Spencer that he can go into Kelly's and pick something out for himself. Uh, Laura asks Scott if he really did help Ava hide what he, she did to Morgan. And he says, well, hypothetically if I did help Ava you know it would be attorney client privilege and Laura's like yeah but that doesn't excuse you from committing a crime and you know maybe he was protecting her from Sonny and Laura's like no look first of all Ava set that fire you know herself and you know she would have been better off arrested than because you know look what happened and then the fire gets brought up and like you know he says it haunts him and Laura says that Scott, uh, Laura says the Scott she knows is somewhere deep down inside of him. And, you know, then Spencer comes back out and she wishes that Scott made it easier to root for him. Don't we all? At General Hospital, Kiki is spending time with Ava. She tells Ava to set her mind to live because anything she sets her mind to, she can do. And then she tells, uh, you know, make that decision. And Ava starts to open her eyes. I think now that, oh, that's, I look so gray. Why do I look so gray? Oh, okay. We're just, we're going to stick with this. So then Ava starts to open her eyes. Uh, Ki Ava wants to talk to her, but Kiki runs and gets a doctor. Uh, one of the doctors comes in, and Dylan is proud of Kiki for bringing Ava back. Uh, Kiki knows it's a long road for Ava to come back. Uh, so then the doctor tells Ava she's still in serious condition, 
And Ava asks why they didn't just let her die. Um, and he says it's their job to keep her alive. She didn't have a DNR in place. And he asks if she wants to put a DNR in place in case her heart stops again. So Kiki asks if she can see Ava. Uh, she asks if you know maybe she'll have another cardiac episode. Um, the doctor says you know they can begin to treat her wounds now. Uh, they're going to start skin grafts, but they can't uh, guarantee she's not going to have another episode. Uh, so Kiki wants Dylan to go home and rest, and she thanks him for being there with her. So Kiki comes back in. Uh, she sees the DNR on Ava's chart, and Ava says she wants it. You know, no extraordinary measures, just let her go. So Kiki's like, well, what about me and Avery? And Ava says that they'll be better off. There are arrangements to make just in case. Uh, Kiki says that she'll be fine. There's a treatment plan. Um, Ava says she needs to say something. You know, she forces it. Um, she's sorry for what she did to Kiki, and she's sorry for what she did to Morgan. At Carly's, will Carly and Sunny be able to heal? Uh, well, they kiss, and Jocelyn comes in. Uh, that goes over just about as well as you can expect. She's not happy to see Sunny, and Sunny says that they can pick this up another time. Uh, Carly just wants to talk about the movie Jocelyn saw, and Jocelyn isn't having it. So she feels that she's owed a thank you for saving uh, Carly from Sunny and herself. Uh, but Carly doesn't feel she has to explain herself to Jocelyn, and they're still married anyway, so it's not like they did anything wrong. And Jocelyn says Sunny is the worst thing that ever happened to her, Carly, not Jocelyn. So Carly's sorry she dragged Jocelyn through this cycle multiple times, and Jocelyn says the only reason Carly goes back to Sunny is because she feels she doesn't deserve better, but she has to free herself from Sunny for good. Oh, I thought I saw a spider in my car, but it wasn't. It was a shadow. So Carly says that she knows it's not easy, and Jocelyn says that, you know, she's not, she's taking him back. She can tell she's taking him back. Uh, Carly says nothing's for sure, and there's a lot more to her relationship that Jocelyn doesn't know about, and she says she knows enough to never want a relationship like that for herself, and she asks Carly, like, would you want me with someone like Sunny? And the answer is no. So as Sunny's lore stops over, uh, she has a guest, it's Spencer. I love that kid, like I can't, I love that kid so much. So Spencer shares uh, some of his cookies that he bought, and Sunny defends his not, you know, loving sweet stuff a super lot, but that's indefensible, and we all know it. So he says, uh, Spencer says he's staying for a while, and Laura's like, yeah, we're still working it out. Uh, he's looking forward to summer in Port Charles, uh, but Jocelyn is so much older than him now. Like, this whole thing, like, doesn't work with aging her up and no one else up. Not that I want Spencer aged up. You keep that kid, that kid, that is his role for the rest of his life. I don't care. Uh, so Sunny made Spencer apparently the best sandwich ever uh, to show him that, you know, sweets aren't the only good thing about life. And Laura's going to take him and head out, but make sure his plate, uh, he takes his plate and glass to the kitchen because chores. So Laura talks to Sunny. Apparently it's really important to Spencer to be near his family right now, but he isn't super open and he doesn't really, like, talk about how he feels. And maybe, you know... Uh, you know, Sunny says, well, maybe Carly's going to be in the picture, too, this summer. Back at General Hospital, Scott runs into Dylan. Uh, Ava regained consciousness, and the doctors are talking about treatment. And Scott asks, her, uh, asks him sorry, if visitors can come in. And Dylan's like, it's really just family right now. Um, and he asks if the cops have talked to her. Uh, you know, he would hate for Ava to incriminate herself or someone else while she's on drugs. So then Dylan calls him a lowlife and punches him in the face. Good for you, Dylan. And now, end scene. Uh, TJ gets them all dessert at Kelly's chocolate cake, and they're all adults sitting together eating chocolate cake. And now I want chocolate cake. I wanted that when I wrote this, and now I want it now. Someone make that happen. Uh, Stella thinks that she's going to extend her stay. It's open-ended. Lovely. Uh, Dylan doesn't want Scott to bother the family with his agenda. Uh, he tells him to get out of here before he hits him again. Uh, how does he live with himself? Ava says she never meant to hurt Morgan. Just taking him off his pills alone is hurting him. Like, this, uh, it, cognitive dissonance. So, you know, she was just trying to protect Kiki, and she should have left them alone, and she's so sorry, and Kiki wants um, her to get better, and then they can talk about this. And I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't. As Sunny says, you know, plans may change when it comes to the divorce. There's been recent developments, and things are looking up. Uh, Carly says that she thought she'd be happy if she had enough money and love, uh, but there is no magic number. The secret is to love the life you have and to love the people you're blessed with. And Carly says there's so much strength and forgiveness. Uh, she used to only walk away, and now she has options. And Jocelyn's like, no, it's not forgiveness. It's hopelessness. Uh, and then uh, Jocelyn tells her to go ahead and go back to Sunny. So... Um, what since she's you know so since she's gonna do what she's gonna do anyway just do it uh, so that is it for Friday's General Hospital recap thank you for bearing with me it has been 
crazy. So now I'm going to film two more, two and a half more. Uh, but thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in later these two seconds. Bye.